the fly ball to deep right. Blanks to the track. It is gone. Hey, how's it going, guys? This is Dan Farnsworth. I'm here with Robert Van Squig. Uh, we're, we're talking. This is the first in our series. Look at what major league hitters do. Our first, our first video here. We're gonna be talking about bat path. You know, so we're, we're looking at uh, about ten guys here. And see, see what the similarities are. Some of the stuff that we look for and the hitters that we work with. Yeah, so uh, just real quick, this is Robert. Um, this is our first episode on Bat Path. We're going to do a couple more where we get a little bit more detail. The first episode, we're, we're going to kind of give you guys a introduction and then point out some things that are, you know, some of the smaller things, but important things of what these, uh, of what the best hitters in the game are doing. So here's here's Trout. Daniel, why don't you take him through and start to kind of break it down. Trout there. Now next up here we have Paul Goldschmidt. Here he is hitting a <clears throat> slider from Johnny Cueto out to right center field. And so you know we saw Trout. We saw Trout here before. And we're kind of going to look at the same things here. You see how that first move here he drops that back elbow in behind his body. <clears throat> and the same same sort of relationship happens here, where you can see his his front elbow stays really quiet. Uh, there's not not anything lifting out or or it's moving forward. It's staying Staying nice and still, wait, waiting for the rest of his swing to catch up to it. And then as he as he progresses into the swing, you know he's already on plane with this pitch back on his back hip here. You see, he's nice, nice and open there. <clears throat> yeah, and you know, I think why this is important. This is an off-speed pitch. I think we're not in plane until we're out in front. We're not able to handle this pitch nearly. Enough. I think when we get in plane, I think we're able to. I think we're able to adjust off-speed much better because now we're in a position where we the fastball or they then keep going out and catch that off speed if we, if we go back a little bit further I think there's a couple good things to point out here if you look at as he drops that elbow look at how he's dropping the elbow without dropping his shoulder right there that's, that, that's just such a in my opinion that's such a key position he's dropped his elbow without dropping the bat head his hand and his shoulder so it's like he's dropping the elbow more under his shoulder without he doesn't drop the elbow with his shoulder which I think is a huge thing to that's 
one of the, one of the complaints I've gotten on some some of the stuff that I've written is you know it's, you know guys guys think about swinging down on the ball so they don't drop their don't drop their shoulders and don't loop, but you can see you know you can you can think about getting on plane behind your body without having to change the slope of your shoulders and, and tilt your head back and everything. You see Goldschmidt gets on plane, his shoulders tilt, but they tilt more <clears throat> towards more, towards the plate. Like, it's more like, a byproduct of what the right. elbow's doing as opposed to an active tilting where it's posture that path would be altered. Right. <clears throat> and so you can see the same sort of same sort of relationship here where you know we get to, we get him to contact and his shoulders are tilted. You know, there's no there's no violent wrist roll over here. You can see he does does turn his wrist over a little bit sooner than Trout does, but it's not forcing the bat around his body and across his body. You still see him get that gap between his arms, and his finish still comes more over the top of his body. Yeah, and, and, and I think the thing with the finish is it almost looks like Trout um, and Goldschmidt alike, it looks like because they continue out, and you know, like Dan said, he does roll a little early, but I think it's more as he's sitting perfectly out of the picture. Look how that, the, there's a couple things to right here point out. Look at how his right shoulder is underneath his chin, and then it looks like it gets pulled through to finish, almost like where it's getting pulled out of the socket. And so that finishes more in front of that back shoulder, so he's really staying out through for a very long time. This is a ball that he really destroys. I think this is really key in dealing with what the modern pitcher throws at, at, you know, at hitters. I think these are some very, very elite movements that that you see in the best hitters on a consistent basis. And I think this is an excellent example. Alright, and on to our next guy here is Joey Votto. And we have two clips of him we want to illustrate something uh, you know kind of Robert brought up uh, on the last swing here. You know, he, the first one we're gonna see is him him on a fastball. He's gonna be taking this pitch out to left center field for a home run. <clears throat> Now, just, just looking at you know, the same sort of things we've been talking about. You know, the first move is down behind his body there. You know, he's, getting that, he's getting into that palm up position real early, so he's already on plane with the pitch. You know, not, a, not his barrel. His, barrel's, his barrel hasn't dropped down below his hands yet, but his hands are already, already starting to level off here and continue out on the plane of the pitch. So you know, where the hands go, the barrel must follow. And so you know, we'll, we'll take you through first, and we'll talk about the fastball curveball. So same same sort of same sort of move here. He gets through the pitch here. It d doesn't stop at contact, and there's no there's no roll across the ball. Everything's still going out to the middle of the field, and you see that same same nice easy finish there. There's no you know same thing. There's no violent wrist roll across the body. Everything's everything's more of a throw than than a uh, a push or or like a uh, you know yeah a wrist roll. Yeah. So I mean you know it, as comes through here, he's, he's, he's swinging at a fastball, but the key thing that we're trying to talk about, because of the way he gets in plane, he starts swinging at a fastball, and, and if that ball cut or it had extra movement, he could, he could deal with it. He's in a position where he can handle extra movement, extra changes in velocity, and, and you know, and do a pretty good job of it. And, you know, I hear hitters say all the time, you know, I, well, I hit a curveball, but I thought I started swinging at a fastball, and I just got it. I heard a number of professional hitters say that on balls that they hit very well. And, and and I think that's why you see him here hit this ball with authority to the opposite field of the ball that's actually on the inner third of the plane. Not on the, on the, not on, not on the outer third. He hit the, he hit the inside fastball out to opposite field. And, and I think that's that's one of the things that differentiates these guys from even other just average big league hitters. I think because they do this so well and so consistently. So the swing there, see that nice finish over his shoulders there. Here's the next clip of Votto. Here he is hitting a curveball, <clears throat> curveball or slider down low. On the pull side. Yeah, and now now he pulls he pulls this ball over the right field fence. Yeah. And so we're still gonna see, and this breaks down the hand path really nice. We're still gonna see the same move that he made on the fastball previously. Where where he's in position to hit the fastball deep. Right. And now all all he has to do, he's still he's in position. If that if that pitch was that inside fastball, he'd still be able to hit that ball out. But now you know he he's he's now obviously adjusting to it being 
an off-speed pitch, he has to catch it further out on the same path, and he's still able to square it up enough that he gets it and also keeps it fair without hooking around it because he doesn't have that, you know, like Robert said, it's not east to west with the bat, with the bat plane. It's more north to, north and south. And see, I look how that back shoulder comes under where guys that are more level, more around the ball, you see that back shoulder, even though it falls down, kind of turn into their chin where – might hit it a little bit at the end, but it's relatively under the shoulder. I think that's so far. That, that's a that's a that's a that's a small thing, but I think it's something that you look at, um, and I think it's something that you see in the best hitters is their is their shoulder comes under their chin. Yeah, I mean this is just a, a, a great example of how a good bat path can set you up to react to a pitch, and you don't have to sit there and, and guess what the pitcher's doing and have to risk guessing. All right, next guy here, a little preview there is Troy Kulowitzki. And we're going to have him hitting a fastball, fastball out over the plate for a home run to right field. And we're going to see the same same sort of interactions here with his body. So that yeah, first move, still that back elbow dropping in there. That front elbow staying quiet. The hands follow, coming down behind his body here. And he gets on plane, also back back near his back hip here. All he has to do is just continue out on that on the same line as the pitch, and he's able to hit now an outside pitch for a home run. And you see it really, really nice, even though it is away from his body. You know, he does he doesn't go out and around to get it, and then force his hands across. I mean, Everything is still out through the middle of the field. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I don't have much to add about this, but I but I, I do like how deep the contact is, and I think because of the way he gets in the zone, everyone talks about catching the ball deep. Short out front to catch the ball deep. Well, that doesn't make much sense. But because of that that movement right there, look how deep he catches. That's, that's, I mean, that's just awesome. And you know, I think that's uh, this is a really nice example of how getting in the zone the proper way allows you to let the ball travel if necessary. Or like we saw with Blotto, hit it a little bit more out in front if necessary. I think you know, and just one more thing before we move on. You know, a lot of a lot of hitting coaches talk about being short to it and long through it. You know, everyone has a variation of that that idea, but you know, for the most part, you know, most of the things that I was taught and most of the things that I hear are more about being short to contact out in front and then trying to trying to almost change direction and stay out through the ball where, you know, really, you, know, you can't think of the ball as a fixed point. The ball is always moving and you're always going to catch it at different spots in in its path. So what that's, you know, just, just adding to what Robert's, Robert's explaining, that's, that's why it's important to be short to the path of the ball, not necessarily to an artificial contact point out in front of the plate, and then be able to catch all those different contact points based on how fast the pitch is or how, you know, if you're a little off timing-wise. Right. So, I think it's a great example right here. Now, I think the rest of them, we should just kind of take them through. I think I'll just kind of show them a couple of things. The only next thing I want to point out, Ron, just kind of take them through. This ball hits up pretty well. And... One of the ways we actually do this, one of the commonalities that we look for, is look how as he comes in, take one, there you go, right there. Look how his arm forms a right angle. It forms more of a right angle, and we'll see he's dropping under that shoulder, and he hasn't dropped the whole backside, he's more just dropped that elbow. But he, he's in that right angle, which I, in my opinion, allows him to get to that back hip with the palm up. So now take him through, and now he's got the palm up behind the back hip, and now he continue through with a very direct, you know, bat path where everything's kind of, you know, staying out through. I think that right angle behind is such a key thing, and it's, and I really heard, I haven't heard any, any, you know, anyone talk about it, but that's just an excellent movement right there, and and that's something we see with the, you know, all these top hitters, and, you know, I, I think then from here we see all the same things that we've kind of talked about, but this is just a really, really great example, and now I think we have bunch of older examples kind of coming up after this, but we see the same things that have kind of stood the test of time with these other guys coming up here. I think there might be one or two more um, of modern era hitters than a couple guys have played, and, you know, like the steroid era and stuff like that. But I think it's it's worth looking at all of them. I think they both point out certain things. We kind of see the same stuff here with Kelly's name. So one of the things, one of the, one of the other little things that as Robert was talking there I wanted to mention was uh, <clears throat> Actually, I guess two quick things, and we'll, we'll look at the rest of these guys. So, you know, kind of, you know, you can see that that right angle forming back there. You know, how, how these guys are able to drop in there without, or how these guys are able to start their swing, you know, start coming down without having to turn their shoulders forward. 
it's almost like that shoulder kind of rolls or almost like the the uh the shoulder sort of rolls back almost like you know almost like a pitcher as he's getting into that forearm laid back or you know what that layback position or you know, external rotation whatever whatever you want to call it you know so so he's able <clears throat> you know that so he's able to really let that elbow lead and so he comes through here and it's a natural natural progression of his hands getting kind of kind of propelled forward by by just where his how his elbow started it so it's it never it doesn't look like it's a pull where somebody would say it's dragging but it also doesn't look like a push where you know he's just pushing his hands out through the ball it's much more of a like a like he's catching the ball and throwing it yeah. off and his bat exactly yeah. um yeah i mean and and you know i think in the next episode we'll get, or in the one after that we're going to talk about a lot of little details there's a lot of tiny little details that i think are important to kind of look at with these guys um and you know and so but i, I think that's a great example to bring up how that how it kind of rolls back more rolls, it rolls back and towards the spine as the first move and then kind of continues through so this is you Barry Bonds, and uh, one of the, one of the things you know, we'll talk more about gather and stuff. It's, it's one of the things we like looking at with him. But you see all the real nice arm actions here. That back elbow starts dropping in. Pause it right. Go back right there. Yeah, I mean, and there you go. Just like you saw in bronze, so like you saw, yeah, you know, close, uh, I think it was Goldschmidt. That's the same position there, and it's, and it's you know it's a commonality. They might have got there different. They all kind of move their hands different. They all have different timings and different rhythms, but they all kind of move in these similar patterns. This is a very elite pattern to these top, you know, these high-level hitters. And here, this is just this is a this is also an excellent example of hand path right here. I know we, we also like looking at this one because it really looks like the path the path of the of his hands and his bat really makes it makes it look like his shoulder his left shoulder gets pulled out of socket. You know, there's not a lot of active rotation going on. Especially once once he gets you know down into plane and then towards contact, and you see it's like his shoulders kind of stop, but because of because of how the bat has been thrown through the through the contact point <clears throat> out towards the middle of the field, everything else gets pulled through as a as a passive result of, of how his hand path works there. Here, uh, this will be the, the last hitter that we look at right here. But we're, we're just going to see the same things with him. And he, he kind of makes that angle. And like Dan said, he really rolls that shoulder back. So once again, he's getting that palm up at that back hip. And he's getting in that lag position deep. So like here, this the, I think this was an inside fastball. He catches it deeper and hits it, I think, for a base hit to right center field. And, you know, and that's just you know, it's a very, very elite pattern that he has here. And he's a little bit more down and across, but I think he gets away with it due to the barrel being in the zone in the proper way. And then from there, there's a little bit of variance how he brings it through. And, but I think when you get it in that zone, in the, you know, with, with that with that right angle, and, and you get it with that palm up behind the hip, I think um, I, th I think your your finish isn't as big of a deal like you see here with pools. You just 
just see it come through nice and easy. And he's a little bit flatter, but I think the way he gets in the zone is what separates him from most of the other hitters in the game. Yeah, so anything else you want to add? No, just the only thing is, you know, this is our first uh, series on hand path right here, and we're going to have a couple more episodes and even break it down further, talk about a couple of the finer points. But, um, yeah, we've got more episodes coming.